there was something in that movie theater. And I think it's with us now. Yeah, that's right. I saw Evil Dead tonight. Yeah. Okay, it's been a little while. It's a couple weeks since I'll review, but whatever. I guess I'm in a thriller horror mood this month, I guess. I don't know. Weird. It's right before uh, the big summer box office blockbuster season, so I don't know. Hmm. Okay, anyway, so, Evil Dead. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is a remake of the original film. It came out just shy of a month ago, and uh, I finally got around to seeing it. I, actually, my home theater actually got around to putting it in, so, hmm. But yeah, before I had a mild interest in seeing it, and then and then I thought, well, uh, what the hey. It was between this and the baseball movie with Jackie Robinson, believe it or not, this one. Uh, just on a coin flip, actually. But uh, anyways, um, I have seen the original Evil Dead with, uh, with uh, Bruce Campbell once, directed by Sam Raimi. I saw it once, I thought it was a good movie, not, ser not necessarily a great movie. Not the, the big success, you know, big movie that everybody calls it, you know. I didn't uh, get as much out of it, but um, I was probably so turned off by all the blood and guts and stuff that's all, you know, really, really fake. Like, I remember there's one part where this girl is under a cellar. They don't have it in the remake, but uh, in the original where um, this girl gets dragged under and then she's, like, being partially devoured or something, and there's, like, Kool-Aid, like somebody's literally dumping a huge container of Kool-Aid around, and it just, it looked really, really silly. But, uh... But it kind of gives, it, 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 you still get that effect of, ugh, somebody's just being ripped apart, you know, and we can't see all of it, you know, and it's it's kind of one of those things. The remake, in the meantime, is a little bit more serious. The original was a little tongue-in-cheek, you know, you get a little bit of laugh-out-loud moments. Like, there's a part where a deer comes off, uh, you know, like, people hang deer, you know, above their mantle place or whatever, and, uh... And it starts laughing at the characters and stuff. N nothing like that happens in the remake. Uh, but I was laughing the whole way through at just the, uh, the overuse of blood. I don't know, I, I don't know why I necessarily find that funny. I know there's a few people who do, but I'm one of those people, if there is more blood than there absolutely should be, like, if there's, like, a gallon of blood when there should be only be, like, a few, you know, not as much, I laugh. <laughs> Whenever it's ridiculous, like, there's a few moments here in this remake, you've probably seen in, in like, the, uh, Red Band trailer and stuff where this girl takes a... Uh, like a knife to her tongue, and it's it's so it was so ridiculous and so off the wall. I w I just had to laugh at it. I heard there were some uh, the audience members with it was only a few of us. Uh, conveniently enough, there were six of us, which is kind of strange because in the movie there's only five characters, main characters. But anyways, so that was that could have been close, but uh, but yeah. <laughs> couple moments like that, and then there's like, you know, other moments where somebody starts taking their face off, you've seen that in the trailer, and I, I just had to laugh at just the ridiculousness of, of the amount of blood and stuff, and then sometimes it just gets so graphic that it's just, you know, how could that really happen, but I think that's, that's kind of the, the tone of this remake, is to make it so ridiculous, and it's the tone really of, um, a lot of really good slasher movies, or at least some good, as in the spirit of fun, slasher movies like the original Friday the 13th, where they come up with kills, or in this case, instances where there's just geysers of blood coming out, when there really shouldn't be, you know. Like, uh, in the original, like, they make the death so, you know, almost close to implausible, or almost close to impossible, that people just say, oh, it's a, in the spirit of fun, or whatever. Which, it's, uh, it's a strange audience, you know. You find strange audiences who get fun out of watching people die on screen. But, uh, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, so basically the story, if you know, since I haven't gotten around to it yet, is five around teenagers. I don't think they're really supposed to be teenagers. But uh, five adults go into a cabin in the woods, and uh, one of them finds an evil book, the Book of the Dead and uh, unleashes the evil within, and pretty soon one of those characters is pretty much possessed, and weird things start to happen, and graphic things start to happen, and one by one, the other four fellow cabin mates start to experience demises. I don't think it's any spoiler or anything here. It's, it's been out for a month, so anything I say would not necessarily be, you know, spoiler-induced, but... There, I, it has made a fair amount of money so far, close to $50 million, which is good for a horror movie. 
uh, especially around this time. But uh, certainly, I think this remake is a is a good remake. It's not a bad remake. You know, it's not on the level of like Friday the Thirteenth or Nightmare on Elm Street. Those remakes were bad, especially Nightmare on Elm Street. God, if I ever review that, you are going to see a side of me of anger and frustration that you haven't seen yet. Even though I did review the new Die Hard movie, which kind of sucked. But uh, anyways, um, that was a couple months ago. Check out my channel if you haven't seen that one. Yeah, this Evil Dead, it's it's a good movie. I wouldn't necessarily call it a great movie. And as far as remakes go, this is one of the better remakes I've seen. And I think part of that comes from the director and the directing style. Uh, there's all sorts of great shots in this movie. Like the first opening shot after the prologue scene... In 3D, it could have been very, very uh, dizzying, very, very bad, because they, the, it's basically a shot that's flipped, like the camera's upside down, and you see, like, the tops of the trees and maybe a little bit of road and stuff, and then they gradually start to, you know, pan down or whatever and flip up or whatever. It's, it's fascinating how some of these work. And, of course, movies like these, uh, horror movies, are prone to do this because they have such low budgets, and this is no exception. Evil Dead had a... Even for 2013 standard, it's a low budget. Um, it was only like $15 million or something, maybe even lower. And uh, it's, it's another one of those movies where the marketing push uh, costs more than it did to finance the film. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I remember I, I saw a little while ago, there was a YouTube video, <laughs> YouTube advertisement, where they have the girl, you know, who sticks her head out from under the cell or whatever. She's like, uh, you know how YouTube has those things where they have ads and you can skip them after five seconds or whatever? And this girl's like, don't skip it, don't skip it, don't skip it, don't skip it. It's, it I, I had to stick through it. I was laughing. I thought, that is, that is original. That is original. So uh, I do not know the director's name, uh, but I know Sam Raimi helped in the producing of this. He was, I think he was executive producer. He might have been producer, I'm not sure. But he definitely, and I heard he's hand, he handpicked this director and said, I want this guy. And he accepted, which is really cool. And uh, Sam Raimi, I trust him. I've seen uh, Evil Dead, so I know he can. he's a competent filmmaker, especially with Spider-Man series 2 on top of that. Uh, up until Spider-Man 3, but that's another review another day. Anyway, so uh, I have a couple of faults with the movie. The, the first fault, and probably the most important one, is... I really didn't care about these characters that much. Um, the five Of the five people, I kind of sort of cared for one, and that's only because I heard that she was supposed to be in the sequel they're making, and it's supposed to bring back Ash, who's Bruce Campbell, uh, from the original series. And, uh, and I think that would be an interesting twist if they do a, a sequel, and I've heard it's supposed to be completely 100% original. I don't know how much 100% is to them, but to me it means no cabin, no woods, uh, fresh characters, which obviously isn't going to happen since they say it's supposed to be a crossover between the protagonist from this one and the protagonist of the original trilogy. Therefore, it's not 100% original. I'd call that 97% original if I do the math right. But that means no cabin, no woods, no Book of the Dead, no anything like that. 100% original means it's a complete 180 flip, uh, which rarely happens in movies. You get a sequel that's 100% fresh completely. Uh, if it was 100% completely fresh, we might as well go to a different theater at the same time and see a different movie. There you go, that's 100% fresh, as, except it's not a sequel, it's a different movie, but whatever. The point is... Um, the one uh, main character in this name, I think her name was Maya or Mia or something. I, it looks like Maya, but it's Mia, I think. Um, I don't. You, I didn't really feel very much for her as a character. She's kind of like a drug addict at the beginning of the movie, and she's trying to get sober from that. Uh, and that's kind of the whole reason why they're there. Kind of a weak reason, but okay, I'll go with it. And uh, and you know, and then right away she gets all this. All this stuff happens to her. You know, you see it some in some of the previews. And uh, and I have to say that scene that was that was create that had me laughing when the the girl gets uh, I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen it but if you see the preview I think you get a clip of it here and there but yeah that was and it's in the original too by the way but it's a little bit more uh, you know low budget to, to to say the least whereas this one it's all you know high tech gizmos and I have read up on this a little bit and they they have, they claim. There are no computer effects in this movie whatsoever. All the stuff was makeup and like mock-ups and puppetry and stuff. 
so I don't know, you know, I'm, you know, at, at, just like old times, you know, back in the 80s when they had, literally, they had $50 for one shot. They had to make something, you know, for an example. Yeah, so I love stuff like that. And I love the fact that this movie doesn't use CG. Um, I don't think so. And if I looked, there was maybe one or two shots that maybe looked a little bit CGI enhanced, but not necessarily made 100% scratch from CG. If that's what they meant, then I still commend them. They still, I mean, I could tell some stuff, oh yeah, definitely, that is 100% made up uh, on the set, not CG. And then there's other stuff that kind of looks a little CG enhanced, at least. But uh, certainly not all computer shots. And uh, that's certainly something I commend the filmmakers for. It's a challenge to do that today. Well, the, the biggest thing with that is not the challenge of doing it, it's the challenge of, of pitching it to the studio, because the studios, they say, oh, oh, it's so easy, do it in the computer, do it in the computer. Uh, it's hard to do live, and the filmmakers realize that, they do it anyways, and that's cool. I, I commend them for that. I commend them for that. I truly do. And uh, so, yeah, these five characters, I only cared for her a little bit, and then the rest of them, I couldn't care what order they died in, what their personalities were like, just as long as, uh, you know, Nothing happens to this one girl because I already know something is not going to happen to her because she's supposed to be in the next movie. Um, other than that, I think maybe a couple of things could have been changed. Um, the movie, the pace of the movie was pretty good. It just took just a tiny bit of time to get started, almost to the point where I started to look at my watch, not in, okay, oh, it's 20 minutes and they haven't really done anything yet. Oh, it's 23 minutes, they still haven't done much. Not to that point, not quite to that point, but I was getting close. And part of that also, of course, is the movie is only an hour and a half with credits. So you can't, you know, if it's any shorter, then it's going to be a little tough to sell, too. But um, I think it, they could have at least done a little bit more interesting stuff in setting up these characters in that time before all the stuff happens, before the book, you know, the famous words are said and stuff. Um... But yeah, as far as comparison to the, to the original, I think the original still stands as a good horror movie. This stands also, just in its own right, is a good horror movie. I would definitely recommend this to horror fans, but not necessarily to, uh, to general audiences, because general audiences are probably not going to be turned on to this movie just based on the advertisements they see. Uh, I definitely say <laughs> be careful uh, if you watch this movie because if you're prone to being sick when you see b violence on screen, this is not the movie for you. Um, let me think. Um, horror fans will like this. Gore fans will like this. Um, if you're a fan of Sam Raimi, you'll probably get a kick out of it because it is Evil Dead. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think. Is it better than the original? <sighs> I have to see the original again because it's been... It's been at least two years, uh, so maybe my perspective has changed. Maybe I like the original better now, but maybe I don't. Not sure. But this is definitely fan service, to say the least, uh, for a remake. You get a lot of stuff that the original, you know, the original filmmakers, original cast, original screenwriters, whatever, they'd say, oh yeah, that's cool, you know, nice way of including that or something. And I definitely say that this is an entertaining movie. I definitely say it's a movie worth checking out for horror fans, for gore fans, for exorcism fans, possession fans. Oh yeah, you'll you'll get a kick out of this. And one other side note, I did see a preview today for that film, uh, or in front of the film, for Carrie, the remake of Carrie, and uh, with um, Chloe Moretz and Julianne Moore. I have to say, the more I look at that preview, I've seen it a couple of times now, the more I watch it, the more I say, I think they're doing a good thing. I think they're, the Stephen King remake, this is going to be one of the better Stephen King adaptations. Because those two, I, those two stars, you get the, them in that movie, it's going to be good. I hope. I hope. Uh, too close to call now, of course, since it's, what, six months out? Just under six months out? So yeah, that's definitely a horror film I'll see up until that time. I don't know. Uh, next week, I think, uh, you'll get a review from me, definitely, once summer starts. What comes out? Iron Man! Yeah, Iron Man, cool. Iron Man 3. Actually, I have to, I, I have to say this. I know what's gonna happen in Iron Man 3. Uh, I could spoil it for you right now, like what happens at the end, which I'm not gonna say, except for some, sorry. 
But, uh, yeah, I read the Wikipedia page. I shouldn't have. I want to shoot myself for doing it. But, uh, there's an advanced showing. My local theater is showing an advanced showing of it on May 2nd at, at like, 9 o'clock at night. So I'll do the review that night once I get home, and I'll start uploading it. And hopefully by that morning you'll get an early review of Iron Man 3 the day it comes out, which I'm really excited for. Um, and it looks better with every... Every promo I see, I get more and more excited for it, more anxious to go see it, get it over with, experience Iron Man 3. It's going to be cool. I can tell. It's, it's going to be something fun, I hope. And, uh, and the reviews I've read say very good things, and um, it's premiered already in Europe and all that, so you can probably sneak online and illegally stream it. Uh, I am trying my best to resist that, because I know I've seen... Couple sites where I can do that, but I'm resisting for now. So if you see a review before the second, you'll know what's happened. Uh, I've succumbed to my uh, thing, whatever. But uh, let's see. Other than that, let me see. There's uh, that 42 movie I might see. Uh, the one I mentioned earlier in this review, the Jackie Robinson movie. Might go see that. Not sure yet. And then um, another thing. This is kind of interesting. I've been meaning to do this for about a month. Or so, uh, but I made a short film uh, with uh, four people, five technically, and uh, I use some music that I legally do not have the copyright rights to, so I can't upload the video as is on YouTube. I need to arrange my own music or find music that I can claim. You know, I have whatever rights to, and they can't take it off. But uh, it's original movie. It's kind of like a uh, it's a movie I did for a film festival actually, and I. I, you know, most of the time when I when I watch my own stuff, I'm very very cri uh, very very critical of it. Like this mask is so crooked, or these 3D glasses do not. <laughs> I'm usually very very critical of it. Or let me see, do I still have it? I don't know what happened to it. Hang on a second. Where did that hat go? My yeah, I remember my Lord of the Rings hat. I don't know what happened to that, but. Uh, yeah, usually that'll be a skew, or it'll be missing. Oh, God. Uh, what a disaster. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. Ah, yeah. yeah. It's actually a Freddy Krueger hat, but... Ah! Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, this work, I actually really liked it, so I'll try to upload that with my own music sometime soon. And uh, just in case you were curious, it's kind of like a... A mini spoof ripoff, almost of the Breakfast Club. It kind of has that uh, that feel to it, and uh, it's actually a movie. it's a movie. It's actually a short film I can watch that I make that I can say hmm, that's not bad. That's not bad. And uh, so hopefully you'll see that soon. And other than that, sign off. I'll be watching you and my hat. And we'll see you next time. Until then. Evil Dead, horror fans, and for Sam Raimi. Fans.